Welcome back guys to another tutorial. Today we got some pretty cool stuff. Um, quick little update on what we've been doing on the channel so far. My last two videos were super long, big breakdowns on some music videos that dropped. Travis Scott, Wake Up, as well as um, ASAP Ferg Floor Seats. Link to that will be at the end of this video. I also want to mention I did the editing for a new music video um, with Joe Moses, Future, and Metro Boomin. For those of you that are interested in some of the personal or client work that I do behind the scenes of these tutorials, I'll leave a link below to that if you guys want to check it out. Today's video will be a lot shorter. It's going to be focusing on one specific effect and how you can customize it. We're going to be talking about the slit scanning effect. Now, this has been in the recent Muramasa Claro music video, which I'm going to show you on the screen here. And in a few other music videos, most notably this Flume music video. And essentially what you get is this crazy distorted, it kind of looks like a 3D turbulence display. And this is actually pretty simple to pull off within After Effects. I'm going to show you all the ins and outs. We're going to explain the effect. You're going to be able to make yourself look like a Floops Foogly from Spy Kids. So, so without any more waiting, let's get right into the step-by-step -step tutorial. As always, if you enjoy the content, leave a like, comment, subscribe. So we're going to start off within Adobe Premiere and create a dynamic link within After Effects. If you only have After Effects, you can just start within After Effects. But either way, go to your project bin here, click this new page item and we're just going to create a transparent video for now you can also just right click on any premiere footage you may have in here you want to apply the effect to and just right click on it replace with after effects composition and that'll bring this clip into after effects all right now we are within after effects anything that we do here will show up in adobe premiere delete the transparent video layer out of there and we're going to drag in some footage so based off these video examples which i'm showing you here you'll see that you can create some really cool stuff if you just have the subject rotate so let's go ahead and drag in some footage here of me basically just spinning around in this doorway and the key to actually getting this to look really good is you want to shoot this at a high frame rate you can shoot it at a lower frame rate for example 24 frames per second but it's not going to have that full smooth effect that you can really get if you do shoot at a higher frame rate so for this tutorial i shot this with a sony a6300 i shot this at 120 frames per second so when i go in and do my time remapping and slow it down it's going to be super silky and smooth we're gonna have that nice slow motion so let's go ahead and right click here and we'll just go to time and I'll just change the stretch factor from 100 to 200 and you'll see now when I play this back this will be in slow motion also since this is 120 frames per second if I really wanted to I can slow this down a lot more but for those of you that are working with 60 frames per second that should be a general good frame rate to shoot this at I'll leave a link below on a tutorial on how you can shoot in slow motion if you guys are interested all right so there is a few ways we can actually go about creating this effect the main gist of it is you want to apply a time displace effect on to this clip so you can just go up to your effects and presets over here on the right or you can just select your clip and go to effect time and then time displacement we can just of course search time displacement here but once you have that time displacement applied to your clip you'll notice that it kind of is looking like a displacement map effect where you're getting this kind of distortion now what we need to do is actually create a luminance map split scanning itself is an old panoramic photography method when you apply that to cinematography and you create this time displacement what you would be doing is speeding up the whites and slow down the blacks of a video frame so what we need to do is go into after effects what we're gonna do is I'm actually gonna go back to my project bin here I'm going to click on the new composition button and we can just keep the same resolution um, background color you can make that white or black whatever you want and we're going to name this composition our map and click OK now within this we can actually just right click down here and go to new and then go to solid and we'll just name this map again click OK now in here, what you want to do is go up to your effects and presets in the top right. You may need to expand it and we're going to look up a simple little gradient. It's under generate. So drag in your gradient map like that. And what you do and how you create this gradient map is going to ultimately affect what this split scanning looks like. So I'll show you a bunch of different combinations because you really can do a lot of crazy stuff with this. So uh, first off, what I'll do is drag this black level here. You can just select this, grab the little placement, and we'll try and put it about three fourths. Next, let's go back into our composition where we have our original footage with that time displacement effect on it. And we're going to open up our project bin. So just click those arrows, click project, and find our map composition here. You're going to want to take that and drag that in a layer below our original footage. And then you can also just hide this layer. Now select our original footage again. Go back up to your effect controls here 
and we can actually take this time displacement layer and set that to our map and now you'll see if we actually play this we have this crazy split scanning effect and it really does look this it really does look like this 3d rotation now some things you may want to change this max time displacement if you bump that up it's basically going to ramp up the time it's stretching so you'll see this is basically more iterations of what it was doing we'll keep that at one for now time resolution you can bump that up depending on your clip and how fast you want this to play back I'm also going to change this at half resolution just so I can view it a little bit better. And you may want to do a RAM playback just to actually be able to see this um, at its full potential. So just click your space bar, let this do its thing and process the image and you'll see how cool of an effect this really can be. Cool. So let's play that out one more time. You'll see we do this full crazy 360. Now here's where we can actually have fun with this tutorial and show you some crazy stuff. So earlier I mentioned that this map composition here, if we double click and go into it, anything that you do on this is going to affect the entire effect that's being pulled off the slit scan effect. So we'll just delete the mask off here for now. So nothing's confusing. So let me just visually represent what I mean by how you can change it. So if we just go up to our effect control with this gradient map, we change the ramp shape from linear to radial, and then we'll maybe drag it into the center. Let's go check back and go to our composition here and now see what that looks like. So you'll see we have a completely different pattern for what the slit scanning is doing. It's kind of going in this radial pattern like that. So if you want to make yourself look back at it, uh, use the radial. If you want to switch things around, let's show you some other cool stuff. Let's switch back to our map. Maybe put it on linear. Here's another cool thing. You can actually drag this lower. Say you only want it to affect your legs and keep your torso normal. Now let's go back to the comp. And now you'll see since I drag that down, it's only affecting my legs and the top part is actually normal. So we can do a lot with this. One cool thing that you can do is you can actually animate this map. So let's start it at the top here. Let's just keyframe all of these at our starting position. So grab your timeline, place it all the way at the beginning, click and drag down to keyframe all that drag for however long you want, and then just drag this down a little bit. And now you'll see that we have an animation of this going from the top to lower down pop back into your composition here and now you'll see what that's looking like in relations you'll see that it's kind of growing down and affecting my pants um, and now you'll see that my torso is being unaffected as that gradient map as that gradient map is being animated down so let me show you some other cool stuff we're just going to keep going down the rabbit hole with this i'm going to show you a bunch more things that you really can do you can really get creative with this and just go through my channel or maybe use the knowledge you already have to just experiment but some cool things that i found along the way um, let's actually control d to duplicate and we'll just try this on a fresh map we can actually just look up a little flicker effect. Now, this is a plugin that I have, and it's just going to do this with the brightness. If you don't have a flicker plugin, what you could do is just grab a little brightness and contrast effect just by searching that and placing it on your clip. And we can actually open up our effects here. Let's open up our brightness and contrast. Let's keyframe our brightness. And then using the page down and page up keys on your keyboard, you can move forward and just bump this up and then down so just go ahead and just bump that up drag it up drag it down we basically are just creating a little flicker effect you can even select all those keyframes move over one and just paste them Control v here's what this is going to look like we paste that all in crazy flickering now if you don't want it to be that fast and actually space these keyframes out or you can just kind of change it by lower values. But if we have this crazy flickering with our gradient map, let's hop back into our composition. And now it's gonna be going super crazy and glitchy. You can really get some insane looks just with that. So here's where the keyframes aim end and it just goes back to normal. You can combine any of these things that you're doing to the map. So this one actually just has a flicker plugin on it and I animated the gradient ramp going down. Now I wanna show you one more thing. I wanna show you how you can link your slit scanning to an actual song so that as this glitchy 3D effect is going on, it'll kind of turn faster or slower depending on the beat in the actual music. So this is super cool. Let's go back into our map composition. Start with a fresh map here. I just have a few like instrumentals here that we can go ahead and drag in. And of course you can use this with any song. Maybe you're actually doing this for a music video. You can drag in the actual audio file from the music video you're working on. And you can actually have this glitch effect completely synced with the song that you're working on for the music video. Basically like a robbery type beat by Juice World. What I'm going to do 
is I'm going to right click on that audio file. I'm going to go to keyframe assistant here and I'm going to click convert audio to keyframes. It's going to create this null layer here. And if you open that up, you'll see these are all just little keyframes that we can now sync our effects onto. We're going to apply a brightness and contrast effect onto this like we did before for our flicker, drag that onto our gradient map layer. And now what we can do is let's click open our transform options here, open up effects and then open up brightness and contrast. And now we're going to hold down alt on our keyboard and we're going to click on the stopwatch for brightness. And basically this is going to open up our little expression editor here and you'll see these little new tools that pop up as well as the number will turn red. Before we do anything with that, let's take our audio amplitude null layer. We're going to open that up. Just click your triangles, open up effects and then open up both channels. So this is your left audio channel, like your left headphone, your right audio channel. And this is both. And you'll see you have your slider here. So go down to where it says brightness for your map, take this pick whip tool and then just click and drag and you're going to want to connect it to this slider box here. You'll see that it'll light up and it'll kind of put the box around. Connect it to the slider. And now you'll see that it'll add the expression onto here where basically the brightness is going to correspond to these audio keyframes which are created. So now I'll actually go frame by frame. And if you guys just watch right here on this value for the brightness, as we move along and as this audio is changing, it's going to actually change the value because those two things are synced with the pick whip tool. So a cool thing we can do is we can actually click onto this expression, press space, and we're going to hold shift, click eight, do the multiply sign, and you can choose a value, maybe 15. It doesn't have to be anything too high or low. We're just adding this value so that there's more of a, there's a more dramatic change, a more visual change that we can see. Actually, I'll probably put that on 10. I think 15 might be a little too crazy. So now let's go back to our composition, play that. let this ram preview play out it's gonna be super glitchy and weird while it just kind of renders you'll see the green bar going up here and now check this out guys if we play this you'll see that every time the beat goes dun dun every kind of like high note of the beat you'll see that my body contorts according and synced with that so we'll play it So super cool. I hope you guys did enjoy this. Now, I think this is a good time to mention that there is an actual plugin that you can get that you guys can purchase for $10 on um, ascripts.com to be able to get something similar to this. I did want to show you how to do it manually because you get this full customization of the gradient map. You get the full understanding of it. There's a lot more you can do if you do actually do the manual way. Plus you save money, but I figured it's fair to mention that there is a slit scan plugin, which you can pick up. I'll leave a link to that below. 100% not 100% not promoted. I just want to give you guys as much info on this as I can. Very similar. You get some nice sliders for the width. Also quickly, this actually operates only with an 8-bit. If you want to have more kind of color control and more depth to this effect, what you can do is when you're ready to render, go over to project here. You'll see it says 8-bit right there. You can just select that and change that to 16 bit once you're ready to render. And like I said, you'll just have a little bit more depth and clarity with the actual slit scanning effects. Change that back to eight if you only want to use the plugin because it's only eight bit support on that. So I've been trying to focus on getting towards Windows ex window extensions for my future products creating plugins for you guys. If you guys would like to see me make my own slit scanning plugin where we actually have some preset drop downs where you can choose any of those crazy little alterations I just showed you, let me know in the comments. I think that's something that I could definitely work towards. And like I said, in the future, it's I think it's been like six months since my last pack, but I'm working towards creating some really cool products um, where you can just click window in After Effects or in Adobe Premiere in your essential graphics. And we are working on some Media Monopoly extensions. So more info on that coming soon. I'm super happy to unveil that to you guys. Anyways, I hope you do enjoy this. Um, like I said, this is all dynamic link. So you can file, save, hop back into Premiere. And now you'll see with that dynamic link, you have your slit scan effect within Adobe Premiere from that dynamic link. Anyways, guys, I hope you did enjoy this tutorial. Leave a like, comment, subscribe. All relevant links that we talked about in this video will be down below. As always, thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for supporting, and I'll see you guys in the next one.